Okay, the time being 8.02 a.m. on Tuesday, April 4th, 2023. I'd like to call to order the Westboro Economic Development Committee meeting. Um, first on the agenda this morning, we have approval of minutes. I know we, you circulated the February 7th and did the March 7th go around as well? Did we, did we approve the February 7th? We haven't approved those yet because they, yeah. The March 7th haven't been circulated, right? They were yeah. both in the um, Dropbox. Uh, sorry, there was a folder for the March 7th in case we had it, but uh, I don't yeah. believe the minutes. Okay. Right. So we, ha well, we have had the February 7th one, yes. so it was circulated shortly after our last meeting, I think, in March. <coughs> Has everybody had a chance to take a look at those? Mm -hmm. so I didn't see any crazy. Yeah. Any issues? Any comments? If none, so, I'll... Uh, motion to approve the minutes from uh, February 7th meeting. Second the motion. All right, um, we'll have to do a roll call because I believe Sandy's on the line. So Alexander, yes. Zeph, yes. Riley, yes. Keo, yes. Leonardo, yes. Williams, yes. Sandy? Trey, yes. All right, great. Trey, yes. Well, thank you. Um, <laughs> Excellent. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is the downtown beautification program and I believe Zach and we have a guest speaker today. Thank you. <laughs> so Maureen and I haven't uh, completely coordinated <laughs> our, our uh, speaking arrangement for today, but um, really what I wanted to do was uh, create a space um, for this board uh, to consider um, how it wants to use the downtown uh, beautification fund going forward. Um, as some of you may know, um, that fund has historically funded the uh, uh, collaborative project with uh, the Garden Club and Maureen, uh, the sort of flower box project where we place um, usually around 24 planters uh, lining the sidewalk in our downtown area uh, to enhance uh, the vibrancy and aesthetics of our downtown. Um, those planters are sponsored. It's a sponsorship program model. Um, so uh, individuals, businesses, community members have the opportunity to sponsor a planter um, every season. Um, the upfront fee is larger because we have to go out and purchase a planter. Um, and then you know, the funds collected uh, through the sponsorships pay for watering, flowering, um, you know, plants, soil, all that, uh, and regular maintenance. Um, but what we wanted to talk about was for, um, I guess, really a couple of months, you know, potentially years now, um, Maureen and I have been tossing around ideas um, for other ways that we might be able to, you know, beautify downtown. Um, and so I just wanted to open a conversation with the EDC around what types of things, or if you would like to use the downtown beautification fund as a vehicle in a similar sponsorship way to sponsor other downtown beautification activities downtown, potentially with the Garden Club as a sponsor or with someone else like the Cultural Council. I, I would think that some of the uh, types of activities that would be considered downtown beautification could be things like um, having folks sponsor park benches or bike racks mm -hmm. or um, uh, you know, public art projects, um, which is why I mentioned the Cultural Council as a possible partner, um, but really, you know, I just wanted to see um, what your guys' thoughts on that were and, and if there's anything that you think um, that fund could be a good vehicle uh, for investing in in our downtown. Um, Maureen, I'll, I'll pass it over to you if you want to. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Very well. Um, but I'm actually excited to be here so I can share my enthusiasm for the project. But um, as Zach said, that. Um, the money in the fund came from the downtown flower pots and there's a lot of money in the fund right now there's more money than we need in the fund right now to buy flowers um, and every year we actually do a renewal so people actually um, will renew their sponsorship for the flower box um, people are seeing the flower boxes and they want more so they want to expand the program yeah. but if we expand the program that means more work which is not a bad thing as long as we can handle it and we um, manage it well but um, Zach and I have been talking um, as he said about all these other fun things we could do in town. Um, I'm also on the Cultural Council, so that comes into play. Um, you know, we've talked about on the Cultural Council. Before we, they, the rest of the Cultural Council didn't even really realize there was a downtown beautification, but when Zach and I started talking, we're like, that would be really cool to have, um, like, I don't know if you've seen other towns, like 
um, their cultural councils will have like cows or fish or whatever animal lobsters in Rhode Island or whatever um, that's an art thing yeah. but it's also it could be a downtown beautification but anything we do downtown beautification wise doesn't just involve the EDC or the cultural council or the garden club it's you know the, the DPW has to help we can't leave chairs out all winter or we can't leave cows out all winter or whatever but um, so there's lots of really cool ideas um, Zach and I met last week because um, I'm one of the garden club gardens is in front of the Forbes building and the trustees of the soldiers memorials approached us and said hey can you help out can you make it look better we said of course we can and as we're down there like oh we need another bench who's gonna fund that bench they don't have the um, budget for it we don't have the budget so I said hey Zach is that something that's part of downtown um, so that's why we're here um, I guess that's really it for um, downtown stuff i have lots of ideas for other places like chauncey and every, but that's that's for a different discussion different day yeah. but um so that's basically where i'm coming from yeah does anyone have any and I, I sort of want to also be explicit that the funds the excess funds in the account now really cannot be used um for it's because it's a revolving account and that's how it's set up they shouldn't really be used for anything other than what they were collected for or what the intent was when they were um so uh you know, I think the way to frame this discussion is to think about how you might want to use that account as a vehicle on a similar model, you know, to make certain types of investments in downtown. Um, and I think, you know, to Maureen's point where it comes in, you know, people do reach out and ask, you know, about you know, ideas and ways to beautify downtown. I think this could be a good opportunity to take the excitement that some individuals and folks have for, you know, beautifying downtown and, you know, provide a vehicle for them to, to make, to you know, raise funds or fund it and, you know, make it happen. Um. One of the other things, um, it's not just about flowers and it's not just about downtown, but when you were just talking about funding, um, one of the other ideas we had was a um, curtain for the bandstand at Bay State. Those are pretty expensive. Um, the Cultural Council would to totally benefit like once a year <laughs> um, at this point for Arts in Common if there was inclement weather. Um, but I know the library uses it and other groups use it and the recreation department so that was one of the things Zach and I talked about as well like so that would be really cool if we could come up with some sort of funding mechanism for a big broad downtown beautification um, so and I don't know how that goes through the EDC but if any of you guys know me you know that I love to raise money for good things in town so, <laughs> so just let me know what I can do <laughs> can I pop up in real quick sure um, this is Sandy, obviously. Uh, so the Rotary, we do the Trex collections um, every other week for the thin plastics. And when we collect a certain amount of money, we get benches. And we're always looking for places to put benches. So uh, the park benches could be supplied by the Rotary Club. We have a bench right now that we're looking you know, for a space to put it in. So that's something that we might want to talk about um, in this discussion. OK. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I, I would just add that the select board should be part of this conversation. So the select board asked the Cultural Council maybe a year and a half ago to come up with a public art policy. And I think that's a lot of what we're talking about and it's not complete yet. So I do think that there needs to be sort of an overall planning yeah. and, and it, we probably need to complete that, poli finalize that policy um, before, before we move forward with some of the more art centric. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think that a, um, a combined like uh, working session with the select board is appropriate or wait until the select? How do you? We should you probably follow up on the policy and the okay. status of that. Okay. And it could be a good goal maybe to set, uh, you know, not take up an action right now, but to set in, you know, next year for a future year. Yeah, yeah. I think obviously the flower box program has been well received. It's been a successful program and I think more things like that w that we can do downtown would be and throughout the community. You, know, you had mentioned even over at Chauncey and some other areas in, in town. I think it's definitely something that the EDC should be a part of, and we can um, work with the select board in conjunction with them and these are the other groups such as the Garden Club and the Cultural Council and come up with some ideas. But I would also add that the Master Plan Implementation Committee is pretty focused on revitalization okay. of downtown, and so. 
Um, I'm not suggesting sort of a tri-board meeting to talk about this, but I do think that all of those folks are interested in a similar goal. Yeah. Okay. Any comments or uh, thoughts, ideas? I don't think that makes sense. One question, once the select board votes on it, then let's move forward, will there be prices like donations, like how much is a park bench, you know, because I know a lot of facilities like to, when they donate, they want to know exactly what the money is used for, so if they want $1,000, it's for the park bench or type thing. I think we, we would work on what the program actually looked like. The, I'm, I'm more specific. So we, typically when someone wants to place a park bench on public property, they have to come to the select board and ask them for if they can do that. So I think if we have, if there's an overall plan, then you could probably blanket approve it with the select board. Um, and then the public art policy would just be approved by the board and then would just move forward with whatever group. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I don't think there's something, anything we should be voting on or considering at this time. It sounds like we need to work with the select board, but I think it's definitely something that I, I believe we're all in agreement that it's something we should partake in. Makes sense. All right. Can you use any of the funds the, from the earmark? Um, technically, no, uh, because we've already uh, submitted the contract okay. and we could amend the contract potentially, but. Yeah. Did all that money that was in there, was that all from sponsorships? Do you know that? <laughs> it just seems like there's an awful lot of money and flowers cost a lot of money, so I don't know why have so much money. And I know that. I believe they were. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very thrifty. <laughs> I believe, yes, the money was all from that source. All right. Any other questions, comments? No? All right. Well, thank you very much. And thank you for all that you do with the uh, Garden Club and Culture Club. Just email me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, Maureen. Thanks, awesome. Maureen. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda is the update on the minority and women owned business study. Zach? Okay. I have a small presentation. So as you may know, we are working with the Collins uh, Center for Public Management at the University of Massachusetts, Boston, um, to uh, you know, study our underrepresented business community and develop a plan with some tactical next steps that we can do uh, to better engage and, and better support those business communities. Um, I wanted to come uh, you know, semi-periodically um, to give you all an update on the status of that work and kind of where everything stands. Um, so first, oh, sorry. And See if I can. Oh. Okay. First, I wanted to show uh, the project timeline. Um, so we really, you know, kind of kicked off. We we had like a soft kickoff uh, in December, um, but we really had our true kickoff in January, um, in February and March, where we've been working um, and uh, you know what our consultants have primarily been looking into is document review. Um, so. What we've been thinking about are the you know types of interactions that underrepresented businesses have um, with uh, the town, and you know sharing relevant documents related to those interactions, as well as um, our plans, studies, you know some examples of our outreach and things like that, so that they can take a look and think about um, you know ways in which we might 
improve those to better serve uh, the needs of underrepresented businesses. Um, we're in the midst of kicking off our series of interviews, um, and I can talk more about both document reviews and interviews um, in just a minute. Um, that we expect to go from March uh, through May. Um, we're planning to launch a survey. Um, we actually have a great uh, list of contacts that identify as underrepresented business communities from the Shop Westboro directory. Um, and so we'll be leaning on that um, to launch a survey of the underrepresented business community and try and you know, test um, you know, what experiences are widespread versus which ones are anecdotal. Um, and then uh, you know, throughout this entire duration, um, uh, the consultants are looking at permitting review. So they're looking at you know, some of our permits, uh, you know, from building all the way to Board of Health, to planning, um, to even, you know, town clerk, like our business certificate application, um, and considering, you know, how uh, it would be received by businesses um, with non-traditional backgrounds. Um, we expect to have a draft report um, by October um, and a final report by November, um, potentially early December. So really this project, um, you know, will span uh, the entire year. Uh, and I will make an effort to try and come back to this board every three to four months. Um, I also presented to the Diversity Inclusion Committee last week on the status of the project um, to keep you guys uh, in the loop. Um, for document review, this should just give you a flavor of the types of stuff that our consultants are, have been reviewing um, in February and March. Um, context materials like our annual reports, the organizational chart. Um, the EDC forum, demographic information, some of which um, I pro came, were provided by the schools, um, you know, plans and studies, our master plan, the rapid recovery plan, um, even the EDSAT from 2013, uh, permitting and regulations, so as I already mentioned, like um, our change of document permit, which is a really common one, I think, for like small businesses and entrepreneurs, um, board of health permits, um, which are you know, very common, I think, um, in food service businesses. Uh, different types of licenses, like business certificates, common victualler, automotive dealer, um, and then outreach, like so our social media, both the EDC's Facebook, Town's Facebook, um, and some of our websites. Uh, and so that's where we are today. Like I said, we're kind of just starting um, interviews with uh, staff and several community groups, um, like the Chambers of Commerce, um, uh, you know, the uh, Southeast Asian Coalition of Central Massachusetts, the Center for Women and Enterprise, um, you know, business-oriented groups in the area. Um, and then you know, we expect to start interviewing businesses and, and getting their experiences and kind of testing that against what we've heard already um, over the next month or so. Any questions? Oh, thank, I think that's, uh, appreciate the update. And it looks like progress is being made so that's great and so the reports you I think you said will be November December time frame towards the end yeah that'll be the final report there'll probably be a draft report um, in October um, but okay the final will be December okay great yeah. Yeah. thank you Zach all right so next up on the agenda is the um, 2022 EDC rear uh, sorry year in review award celebration. Yep, so I just wanted to say that, um, you know, just as a reminder, the event is happening uh, on uh, Friday, April 28th, um, with check-ins starting at 7.30 and the program starting at 8. Uh, it will end probably around 9.30. Um, I wanted to thank um, all the EDC members um, who have, uh, you know, helped find sponsors to make the event possible. Um, if there are any other sponsors that are interested, I do just kindly request that uh, you let me know by, uh, Monday at the latest. The reasoning being that we do tell sponsors that we're going to print their logos in the uh, yeah. program, and the program printing has a little bit of a lead time, so I want to make sure that we have those materials ready. Um, outside of that, I think we're on track uh, to have a, a great event, um, uh, you know, pretty similar to last year's. Um, and uh, we're working with Westboro TV and Karen Henderson's awesome team um, to produce uh, some great. Uh, videos um, for the event. We'll also be playing um, the, uh, why the Westboro Works video uh, at the beginning of the event, um, just to kind of set the tone and, and everything. But yeah. you know, we should be on track. Invitations um, are out, uh, and any member of the public could register for the event on the EDC's website if they go under, um, I think, our events tab. 
uh, or actually, sorry, the year review has its own tab, and so they can scroll down and register. If there's anyone that you would like to invite, um, just let me know, and I can point them in the direction of the. Is there a link you can send us that we could forward to somebody in yep. order to register? I'm happy uh, to do that. Yeah, if you could, uh, that would be great. Great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't have the opportunity to talk to Zach about this, but I'm going to suggest that the board members could show up early, maybe to help set up. We don't have a working group this year. So yeah. I'm just yeah. going to throw that out there so Zach doesn't get overwhelmed at 6.30 in the morning. Thanks. I yeah. will definitely uh, send an email out probably by the end of next week with a couple of tasks that I might need help with. Um, last year, uh, the working group, uh, particularly Mark, was incredibly helpful, and Todd, in running around and picking up uh, some of the breakfast pastries and drinks. That would be incredibly helpful again this year. Um, and even just uh, you know folding the programs and the rack cards and laying them out is another task that is yeah. sometimes time consuming and, and helpful. So I'll try and send an email out at the end of next week with what those tasks are. And you know, folks can sign up. That'd be great. Great. I'm sure it's going to be a great, another great event, and um, I think everybody really enjoyed the venue last year, and I'm sure it's going to be just as successful. So looking forward to it. Um, next on the agenda is the quarter nine 495 Chamber Business Expo. Zach? Yep. So uh, once again, thank you to the folks who are volunteering um, uh, with us this evening. Uh, I wanted to just showcase a little bit some of the new banners that Fred and I uh, had printed. Uh, uh, right in the back. So um, our old banners uh, had references to 2013, so about 10 years old at this point. Um, and we decided it was time for an upgrade. And so we put together one kind of general feel good poster on Westboro, uh, kind of showcasing our downtown, the MBTA, um, and then another more business focused uh, pull up banner on Westboro and sort of the three reasons that uh, you know, we think Westboro is a great place for you to locate your business. Um, so we'll be having these on display at the Business Expo tonight. We also printed some other marketing materials to share with people. Um, we actually got um, uh, stress balls, pens, and uh, like little woven bags for oh, people. Nice. So we'll be you know, kind of filling those bags and uh, distributing those. Uh, it's always a great event. We make a lot of great connections. And so if you're available, even if you're not volunteering to man the table, I highly recommend that you, you, you come and, and check it out. Um, and if you're watching a member of the public, it's a great event and you should come by and discover a lot of local businesses. Zach, do you have enough volunteers for the table? Is it we should be all set. covered? Yep. Okay, great. Thank you all for volunteering. Excellent. All right, looking forward to it. It's always a, that's a, a phenomenal event, so I'm sure it's gonna be packed this afternoon. So next on the agenda is the EDC Business Assistant Grant Program. Uh, this is one we've kind of tabled the last couple of months, but I think um, now that our grant program is back on. Yes. Um, we ought to really take this, uh, you know, this time to take a look at the criteria that we use for the rubric and um, see if there's anything we want to change. Um, had, we had asked that people take a look at this prior to the meeting. Not sure if people have, but um, any thoughts and uh, comments on this and uh, ideas, uh, anything? So we had we had talked about splitting it between um, you know existing businesses and new businesses. We had talked a little bit about that, so I'm just going to throw that out there. Yep. Um, so having different, I guess, uh, weighted scores for if it's an existing business versus a new business. Or, al or allocating a certain amount of dollars oh, for see. existing businesses okay. to upgrade, right? Um, yep. I think that's what we had talked about, but I just. Yeah. And the other part I think we had a look about, we talked about at the last minute quickly, I think Zach kind of mentioned was that um, going forward, um, kind of return on investment, we have to start kind right. of including that as part of the possibly criteria. What are we looking to get back on this so we can show to the town? why we should justify to get the money again next year because if we just can't you know you know be able to show what it's even though it's a small amount of money it's gonna be hard to show a return on investment on a five thousand dollar grant but at least you know if someone buys 
you know, one more coffee machine and sells 15 more cups of coffee a day or something like that, that's at least an increase in profit at some level that we can show, you know, back. I don't know how, how, we, how we'd ask that kind of question in the application, but. So I, I think in that part, if I may, is that what we might want to do, we can, you know, I'll work with Zach on this, is that we could tailor something in the application itself. I don't know that that would go to the rubrics, though. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, it should, it should weigh into it should weigh into you. I think the balance because if we just give some money and can't show the difference, then it doesn't help us to get it again next year. I guess that'd be my worry. I think it'd be more of like an annual report. I mean, right. a lot of times when you get grants, you have to follow up with some sort of report. So maybe like a six month or twelve month reporting. Okay. I, I do think that. Um, it'll, it'd be nice to have that information anecdotally, um, I think, and I know that we've been asked for it, so I appreciate the discussion, but I, I just think that um, we're, not, we're not necessarily providing these grants so that businesses can stay afloat in Westboro. I mean, right. we're just contributing to, we're, we have offer a program to support businesses, and so I, I think it's going to be difficult to sort of create that data that, yeah. that maybe a couple people were asking for. Well, maybe those people could work with us in coming up with uh, a way to track this and how we can uh, kind of look back and see, you know, what that return on investment actually was. I think that's something that was suggested, yeah. which could be a good start. Yeah. Uh, and Todd, I think you were copied on the email as well. Kelly Petrelia suggested yeah. that maybe we include in the application a question of how would you you know, measure the impact of this award after six months. And yeah. so we sort of, yeah, like, put it on the business, I guess, to tell us how yeah. they would do it. And then, you know, we say in the program overview and application that, you know, whatever you answer that question, like, you know, we would expect that you can demonstrate to us after six months. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's a great Something idea. like that. Yeah. Um, and then I think that's good, too, because, you know, I think it's also a learning experience. Like, these are, we give money to a lot of different projects. Like, you know, from new businesses to, you know, businesses adding additional seating to, yep. to everything. And so I think it's going to be really challenging to find the right metric that captures the value to all of those different projects, you know. Well, and maybe we have... I, I think some of those projects are... I'm oh, sorry. I think some of the projects are aesthetic. So like a new chair, you know, like the pedicure chair and things like that. So I think we should, if, it's, if we're giving them the money for something, getting some pictures and having, you know, just get it kind of collecting a, a video slide, you know, video slides or picture slides of like what the EDC, you know, has provided for these businesses would be pretty good. That's a, that's a good yeah. idea too. Yeah. We conclude that. Um, what, so one of the things that have come up though is that how does the committee want to treat the, the rubrics? I mean, if there's specific changes, certainly we can do that. But um, now that you've used it a little bit, uh, and we can bring it up again, but it's now it's kind of up to the committee to where you want to go with the rubrics. Do you want to change the scoring? Do you want to? Well, maybe it's not, and I'm just throwing this out there, but kind of um, going off of what Sandy said, maybe it's more a matter of creating two different pools, if you will, one for new businesses, one for existing businesses. Um, making a decision on how we want to allocate out the funds, maybe whether it's 50-50, 60-40, and then utilizing the rubric for each of those categories, whether, it, again, if, if it's a new business or if it's an ex existing business that's expanding or doing some work. Um, what, are, what are people's thoughts on that? Uh, I, I, think that's, I think that's a great idea, because some of these are very much skewed towards new businesses, um, and I think it's, I mean, I think it's just respectful to people that have been doing uh, business in town for a long time to recognize them as well. Yeah, yeah. So we could have one rubric for the new business category, and then tailor that rubric for the existing businesses, and have something a little different as it relates to the allocation, the weighted criteria. Are there any particular criteria? I agree with that. Just so, as it informs me when I mm -hmm. run off yeah. to my uh, yeah. cave and, and do, <laughs> do this. <laughs> yeah. um, are there any particular criteria that you see on the rubric now that strike you as more? relevant to existing businesses versus okay. new no, businesses. Versus. Um, like for example, business does not have a location in Westboro right. does not become a criteria anymore. Right. Because Maybe it's how long has your business been uh, in Westboro? You know, how long have you been operating in Westboro? That type of thing. Um, 
Or maybe adding employees for existing businesses. Yep. Yeah, it's a good idea. I like that. Or if yeah. there's an expansion that has some kind of parameters to it, you know, um, you know, 25 percent square footage or something like that. <coughs> so it's um, we'll work the working group volunteering the guy in the back. We'll, we'll look at <laughs> putting up the two rubrics. Uh, no, so. Yeah, I'm right, sorry, he's not paying attention. <laughs> uh, well, but I suggest for May's allocation, we'll probably kind of. We're not forced. We're going to have to use this rubric, right? Right. And then maybe for next fiscal year, yep. we could look at having two different rubrics, and then the committee can decide. Not only do you want to split up the rubrics, if you want to split up the funds, I think right. you will attack the rubrics first. Maybe if yeah. I might suggest that the boys okay with idea. that. Yeah. I think, I think that's how that's we good. finished last year. Didn't we finish last year kind of on the old system and then and adopted the rubrics into that? That's what we're going to have to do is adopt so both rubrics at some point. Because it's made a huge difference. It makes it a lot sure. easier, at least to start the process. At least you can look at a number to say, you know, they fit the category, they don't fit the category. Like I said, sitting here a year and a half ago and giving money out was, was horrible. Um, <laughs> like having 10 people, horrible. we were breaking in, not horrible, but we were breaking into $1,000 donations to people, you know, and it really wasn't helping anyone. It was just like, a, mm -hmm. how do we equally not, you know, upset anyone, basically. And I think it's a lot easier to have something to go off of. Yeah, I, I would add maybe, <clears throat> excuse me, one more category. So for new businesses coming in here, these grants are helpful, but they're only a portion of what they're needing to start their business, right? Um, if, it, if it's an existing business, they may be hoping to do something small, and this would be funding it almost in entirety. Right. Right. So for existing businesses, you may want to put in some sort of criteria that is you know, the amount we're giving them relative to the size of what they're trying to do. So yeah. is it something significant they're trying to do and we are going to be a, a quarter of it? Hey, that's great. We want to help you. If you're hoping to do something small and just we're going to pay for it completely, that may not, you know, if the only way you're going to do it is if we give you all the money for it, then I guess the question is, should you be doing it? Right. Right. You know, if you're not putting up any of your own money. I think yeah. so. I think the Lindsay Taylor application was a really good one because they're an existing business. They had a specific service that they wanted to offer. They knew how much that was going to cost. They could predict how much it's going to generate. And to Sandy's point, they could take a picture and say, this is what you helped yeah. us expand right. with. Right. Okay. I mean, I don't think that the two rubrics aren't going to be vastly different. I think it's probably a handful of uh, categories or criteria that are going to change, but I don't think it's going to be. Yeah, so again, I think we'll, yeah. we'll work on that Before and we maybe we'll next month we can bring some kind of uh, draft yeah. for the if committee. If we were to break them up, my only question would be is that we'd have to talk about having like, would it be 50-50 on a new business to, and then, you know, what if we go through a year where we don't have, you know, Pretend, you know, I'd say we haven't had that problem yet, but what if we don't have enough people coming forward for a new business or an existing business, and then we have funds left in pile A, but pile B disappears, you know, I guess that, yeah, once again, it's a problem we can address when we get there, if we, if we get there. Yeah, it should probably need to be a range. Yeah. You know, at least a third to each or whatever, yeah. giving you some That's leeway with the other third or something. I think the other, the other good part about that, if I may, is just, um, where we've broken up into quarters, we should know before the last quarter if there's an excess amount of funds. Um, and then open it to the last quarter a little more. Right. And the finance is a little bit different now because we're, we're going to go basically go the 60000 from March to March now because it will be a reoccurring article. So uh, we don't have excess amount of funds anymore right. like you did for a period of time. We're starting from a new. Yeah. So I, I don't. I don't. I don't yeah. think it's a difficulty. I think we could figure that out. So I didn't know what the rules were. If we start saying it's going to be one, you know, if we had to follow that as a. No, I think, as I said, we had some excess funds because of COVID. And this committee is allocated to different things. You, you were able to uh, allot that money for something else. Yeah. Um, okay. I just want to make sure we were allowed to do that. Yeah. Know it wouldn't be actually a bad thing if. I don't want to say COVID hit again, but if we had access to one, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I, it was also because you couldn't, so you had a revolving account, all the, all the money from the digital billboards went into it, right. but you were only allowed under the bylaw to spend a certain amount. Right. So that's why right. a lot of why you had yeah. excess. 
in this new situation, you can't spend it on anything else yeah. unless yeah. it's reappropriated. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, any other thoughts, uh, comments, uh, I guess? I just wanted to confirm, so the board is comfortable reviewing new grant applications in May, like we would have under the old under timeline. The old, yeah. And uh, quarterly is, like, because I, I know there were some questions from several board members around the timing of when you wanted to review the applications, whether quarterly yeah, or bi-annually or annually was best, but. I think annually could be tough for some of the smaller businesses. Um, some of them that might, that this may be a large portion of their budget, um, you know, it could delay those programs or those uh, projects for them. Um, so my recommendation would not be annually, but I'm open to other ideas as far as. Uh, well, I think the, I think the cadence is determined by how many we get, you know, yeah. I, I think, uh, um, you know, we don't want to get into a situation where we're getting 10 at once. I mean, I still would advocate for some kind of a limitation per voting yeah. segment, whether that would be five per quarter or, you know, whatever the case is. And then that kind yeah. of dictates, well, uh, hopefully if, if the information is out there, that dictates that the people who are most in need will be most eager yeah. to, to put yeah. get their paperwork in. Yeah. So having a... a kind of a deadline date for your applicant, your court, say it's a quarterly application, mm -hmm. uh, quarterly process having a deadline date and whether it's five or however many. We yeah, I, th I think that's, I think that serves a lot of make purposes, it, can, makes it more urgent. Yeah, and yeah. you can, if you don't make it for that quarter, you can hold off and apply right. in the next quarter. So right. I think that's a good idea too. I don't think we've really done anything like that. It's always mm -hmm. been just kind of open to whoever wanted to apply, right? Yes. So I well, I just remember yeah. feeling kind of awkward yeah. when all those people were sitting out yeah. there and you didn't really have enough to, yeah. to make an impact. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, I think quarterly, I like the quarterly cadence. Just, I mean, it's, it's every quarter the EDC is, again, it's about branding for the EDC and getting people to understand what it is we do. I think if we go, you know, semi-annually or annually, it just, it kind of loses its, you know, pop as far as the, the branding is concerned for the EDC. Yeah. So I like the quarterly. Do you want to make any kind of motion to do it to limit the amount of applications for any particular one quarter? The other way, sorry, I don't mean to interject, sure. but the other way that you could do it too is you could have the rubric and you could let anyone apply and then say, only we're only going to consider the top five applicants. Like we're only going to invite yeah. in yeah, the top that's five. Say, that's yeah, that's the biggest thing. Is yeah. To have a 45 yeah. and a 95 come in front of us doesn't, that's, yeah. it's a waste of their time in some ways because I think most people are going to go higher rubric number yeah 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 no i agree limited to the top five or something like that if we want <laughs> to and how much time do you need does the are you i don't know the working group mm -hmm. i don't know that you're a subcommittee the working group need to review the applications i'm just trying to see when we should so usually i set the deadline what we have like an informal deadline now yeah. uh, of two weeks before the meeting so for may 2nd i believe it's april 19th, I think, Tuesday, April 18th. Um, and uh, typically I set a meeting up with the staff working group that week. We review the applications, you know, kind of for completeness and right. score them at the meeting. And so we okay. should have scores up at least a week before the EDC meeting. Okay. That gives us enough time to review them mm -hmm. prior to the meeting as well. And I think the other thing to be mindful of is giving the applicants enough time to right. know that they have to be here right. at 8 a.m. on Tuesday. Right. Yeah. Right. But I think that's still about a week. They all know that throughout the pro entire process that it's possible that, or that they are encouraged to go to the yeah. EDC meeting. So, you know. Yeah. Okay. Does, it, does the board have a number they'd like to bring forward, or for a number of applicants? Mm -hmm. Look, What's the quarterly projection financially? Fifteen thousand. Well, I would think five yeah. is like a good number. I think five is a good number. I, I like that number. You do it based on the, the top scoring five. top five the scoring rubrics. Yeah, that way people yeah. that are real eager but don't have as good of a case don't jump to the front of the line. Okay. Whatever the board and we can if there's a tie we'll just bring in Six. we'll figure it out. <laughs> I mean, you could bring in a sixth, I guess, yeah. if it yeah. was a level of a tie. I mean, yeah. we could worry about that when the time comes. Yeah, but I think I think if you're talking 3,000, you know, on average, I think that's that's substantial. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so then if you divide it, that makes sense. Even if you give everyone. Even if it was even, yeah. Yeah, you take a motion, motion and vote on yeah, that. Yeah, I think we should. Uh, I make a motion that we move on the quarterly criteria for awarding grants. To, to the That's top five. To, to the top five, five yeah. Yep. Yeah. And okay. setting a deadline of two weeks before. Yes, setting a deadline two weeks prior. Yeah, for applications. Yeah, for okay. apps. I'll second that. Thanks. Is there discussion? All right. Any any discussion on that? Are we, are we good on that motion? That All right. Sense. And I'll start. Alexander, yes. Zeph, yes. Bagdon, yes. Rayleigh, yes. Keo yes. Leonardo, yes. Williams, yes. Sandy? Oh, uh, Sandy did say that she might have to okay. drop at okay. uh, <laughs> <we're> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Thank you, West Pro TV. <laughs> <laughs> we're good. West Pro that's, TV, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Motion passed. I think that's a good one. Thanks, yeah, that everyone. Well. I think that I'm anxious to those, try that. Yeah, we won't have 10 people sure. in yeah. the room again trying to. Yeah. Only five and a half. Okay. Yeah, five and a half, maybe six. Actually, <laughs> no more than seven. We'll have 17 ties or something. <laughs> <Yeah. first. laughs> All right, next up is the Community Development Department report, Zach and Fred. Hey. Um, so, uh, for upcoming businesses, uh, the project at the former Chateau building on Turnpike Road um, is before the ZBA. Um, the intended project is a, a Asian market and restaurant concept, so kind of repurposing the building into two uh, uses. Um, uh, for some of our programs, uh, as you recall, um, we won a fiscal year 23 Regional Economic Development Organization grant, Redo grant, jointly with the town of Acton to implement a pop-up project. Um, just want to give a little update on that project, an exciting one. Um, we are actually, uh, we've been working with consultants um, from Upnext uh, to set up the pop-up. Um, we actually launched our brand application uh, last week um, for a pop-up at 57 East Main Street. Um, we expect that the pop-up um, will uh, launch at the beginning of May, ideally May 1st, potentially the last week of April. Um, so we're moving at a pretty quick pace um, to get that set up. As a reminder, it'll be a three-month pop-up and will host um, you know, at least one, potentially two to three brands in the space over the course of that time. Where's 57? It's, uh, it's the, the Eat Bridge Montessori right. School building. Oh, the bistro um, used to be in the. Oh, the bistro over there. Yeah. It's not going to be in the school. bistro storefront. It's actually right. in the storefront next door, um, which is formerly a, a, a spine doctor, I believe. Okay. It's in that <laughs> same strip. That strip. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. It's on the first floor, kind of past the bistro. I think of space or two. Might have actually been adjacent to the bistro. It is j directly adjacent. Yeah, okay, it's nice. like the first of the smaller storefronts right. on that okay. side of the building. Great. Anything else? Um, oh, uh, the uh, business expo is today, but I've already said that from 4 to 7 p.m. Um, Mass Econ is having their economic impact awards this Thursday from 4 to 7 p.m. Um, and uh, State House Day uh, with the 45 Metro West Partnership is next Wednesday. Um, if you'd like to register for any of these on behalf of the EDC, um, please let me know. And then additionally, um, just following up on some of the uh, annual town meeting articles that the board opined on. Um, uh, the article that would allow projection signs uh, downtown um, and transfer the sign review authority from the historical commission to the design review board did pass. Um, so that is, I think, a really exciting development um, for our downtown area and should make it a lot easier um, for folks to do business here. Um, but that's, I think, the big takeaway. Um, the article on the zoning um, uh, bylaw amendments did pass without um, the amendment that, that the EDC had requested or without striking uh, mm -hmm. item 70. Yeah. And then I believe all the other articles that you supported did pass. Okay. Correct. Yeah. All right. Anything else with the community development? No? All right. Other business? We are cranking through this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> well, the rubric wasn't as long yeah. as we were fearing it was going to be. Yeah, I thought <laughs> You never know with the grants. It's <laughs> no other business? Um, I guess I would just say that the, um, the town planner search continues. Um, and this, the planning board tonight is going to consider an uh, interim um, town planner. Okay. So Jim Robbins has offered to come back uh, on a reduced schedule. So they'll consider that tonight and okay. vote on it. Okay. Any update on the movie theater? 
<laughs> that also continues. Okay. Um, nothing you can share at this point. Nothing really. Yeah. Got it. All right. Um, there's something I want to bring up. Just I just wanted to ask, just so we could keep it kind of on our agenda. Is um, I know that Harvey or the company that bought Harvey. I don't know the mm -hmm. name. Waste of it. Connection. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I, I know they've they've now said next year the town won't be dumping allowed to dump there and everything like that. I think it's something the EDC should definitely consider. I mean, as someone that works downtown, I know if you're on this side of East Main Street, you don't notice it as much. But if you sit in my store, the 400 Harvey trucks that go by my store on an average afternoon or a day at any given in time um, don't increase the pleasurability to walk around downtown mm -hmm. shall we say just to pay, to put it nicely um, so as it seems like they you know, I don't know what the deal is so I'm not going to talk disparage about anyone but it seems like they they have put in the city in a position that maybe we have to look at what we can do to kind of you know have our own say back and help the town downtown area I don't know what what we can do whether mm -hmm. it's you know, have the police pull over every trash truck and inspect it to make sure it's safety. It passes every safety inspection and hand out tickets to every one of them that is driving mm -hmm. a trash truck that looks like it's about to have a part fall off it. Um, you know, those are all, I mean, just what, you know, what our options are to help the downtown area for a business that might be leaving the town in a, in a bad spot. So, um, so I know this isn't what the solution you're talking about, but yeah. there's a so the waste management exploratory committee yeah. is looking at what we would do, but that's I know that's not what you're saying. Yeah, but, mm -hmm. no, but I do think the whole. I do think that we've gotten some um, feedback from different residents and businesses about um, truck traffic in the downtown and the use of those brakes in the downtown, yeah. um, and so that might be something for the EDC's discussion to yeah. bring. Uh, I just thought it was part of the yeah. whole yeah. process. Yeah. Well, I'd, I'd like to chime in on that. You and I have had had a, spe uh, a few conversations about this, Christy. Um, the Jake break thing is huge. Um, there are vehicles that are in compliance, exhaust-wise, and you know anybody that knows the purpose of a Jake break. If you're coming up a slight incline towards the center of town where you know you have to stop, there's no reason to put one on it, with an unloaded truck. But if you're coming down a hill, well, that's another issue. So these these ones with modified exhausts, bop, 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 bop. Yeah. downtown, I, I sit overlooking the road, almost the rotary for 20 something years now. It's obnoxious. It's out of control. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, I have some audio if anybody wants to hear it. Yeah. Uh, it's ridiculous. I think for the if we're trying to create a, a an outside dining environment. A walkable flowers. downtown yeah. with with flowers. Yeah, with flowers and buckets. <laughs> with flowers that will yeah. yeah, it's a bit <laughs> yeah, I think I think something I think it's it's in the EDC's realm to consider something that makes downtown more attractive. Yeah. I, I don't think it's an insignificant task. So I think oh, yeah. to Zach's point earlier, <coughs> when you're thinking about when we're thinking about goals, I think that that might be a goal because I, I do you know, you're great with the outside dining and everything else we're trying to do. You know, it's bigger than one company, oh, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. not just one. No, and I'm not pointing at any one company. I'm just saying truck traffic and unbridled exhaust noise is a problem. And it's multiple towns. You read about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hudson North just, Borough, I think Hudson. Hudson just went through it, and Northboro's doing a Jake Break thing yeah. right now, too. So. so it's definitely just, I mean, it's something yeah. I just want to keep, you know, to keep on the agenda as I see downtown. You know, I spend yeah. a lot of time down here like you yeah, do. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Okay, great, thank you. Any other business? Actually, no? No, not no. All right. Um, anyone want to make a motion? To uh, motion to adjourn. I second that. All right. Um, no, we, yeah, all in favor? Aye. All right, <laughs> thanks everybody. Um, thank you. Hopefully see some people this afternoon.